fucking it. Yep. What's going on, guys? This is Garrett and Lincoln from Runamuck MMA. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Uriah Hall versus Anderson Silva, the main event of UFC Vegas 12 Halloween night. And definitely the last fight of Anderson Silva in the UFC octagon. What's going on? What happened? What's going on? God, I was in tears for half of this fight. Yeah. It was amazing. The first round, as most of both Uriah Hall and Anderson Silva in the history, their first rounds, kind of a feeling out process. Mm -hmm. Round two, kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of round two or three is when it really started. Yeah. Um, Yeah, definitely round two or three, definitely where it really, really kicked off. Um, but let's just um, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how I feel like in round number one, Anderson Silva was really running the gauntlet. Raya Hall, who the entire time leading up to this fight kept saying, "I have to turn my my idol into my rival," um, because Raya Hall grew up watching Anderson Silva, as we all did. Yes, and one of the things that he was saying was, "It's going to be hard." going through all those emotions fighting your idol you know the person you look up to and the person you model yourself after and raya hall i feel like in the first one to two rounds really struggled with that i feel like he really struggled with his gun shy nature uh, i think he really kind of struggled to to really say okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i gotta i gotta get him here because he kind of let Anderson Silva really uh, lead the dance. You kind of get hypnotized when the spider's leading the dance, though. Yeah. He's doing all these things, and then you start mimicking those things, and that's when he catches you. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of um, hand fighting. Um, I would say there was a lot of the the taps of the hands. They kept doing that a lot, I noticed. Um, Uriah Hall, I feel like, in general, as a fighter, is more of a um, is not necessarily a volume striker. He's more of a uh, looks for that one one and done hit. You know? yeah. he's more of a power puncher for sure. Yeah. Um, and Anderson Silva, I feel like he needs no introductions as to what kind of fighter he is. And I mean, they're both similar in terms of their striking. There was actually a moment I noticed where uh, Uriah Hall uh, did some spinning back kicks. And uh, Anderson Silva pretty much mimicked it just a few seconds later. Um, I mean, the two were pretty much an even matchup going into the fight, I feel like. Um, because Uriah Hall, I feel like, has been compared to Anderson Silva many times before. Um, and Anderson Silva being at the level that he's at right now, a little bit further past his prime, I think was the perfect candidate to fight Uriah Hall. Especially um, with being the third possible partition practitioner after Uel Romero and Jacare got canceled. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, Uriah Hall. All almost, three of those fights are perfect. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it couldn't have worked out better. Uh, and Uriah Hall was also one of those people that, you know, after I believe after his, uh, he's been, he, he's been on a three fight. Uh, win streak now after having beaten Silva, but I think he was also someone who was moving around a lot between gyms and finally found a home. Um, I forget the name of his his new his new team now, unfortunately, but uh, he's now found his home with them, and I think he's he's kind of hit stride in 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 working on uh, what he's doing. Um, and I think I mean, I think if we were to take a moment and look at some of the highlights of his fight against Anderson Silva, I think we could we could see. You know some of the uh, some of the improvement. Um, I will say though that I think I think one of the things that led to Uriah Hall's victory, and I might get lynched for this. Um, You're gonna. I think that. How dare you have an opinion? <laughs> I think that a lot of it comes from Anderson Silva's chin and how his chin just pretty much isn't there anymore. Um. Because I think that he got hit, like, what was it, like one time or something like that? Like really just significantly struck, like kind of just like once. 
And at the end of round two, he hit him above the ear and knocked him down, and three. then got some good ground and pound. Yeah, round three, I mean. And then towards, and then in round four, he hit him when he was coming in with the check hook. Yeah, and, and that's the one that you kind of put him down, and you're just like, oh, that was really too simple for Anderson Silva. Yeah, like, Michael Bisping, who was calm. He said he was sloppy. Yeah, and even shared the octagon with um, Anderson Silva. Uh, pointed out that that was really sloppy work on the part of the former champion because you don't usually just run in arms open like that, you know, like that was kind yeah. of it was kind of intriguing uh, to see something like that happen from Anderson Silva, who usually is um, very quick and accurate with his strikes and someone who I would say is a bit of a counter puncher. On top of that, very, very interesting um, to see something like that happen, see that finishing sequence. And even Dana White, I would say, was a little bit more um, brash about his uh, summarization of what had happened. I think he also didn't give a whole lot of credit to Uriah Hall because obviously you, I, Dana White, we all think that Anderson Silva probably should have retired a long time ago. For sure. And he said that he wished that Anderson Silva had retired prior to the to, to the bout, and that um, Uriah Hall's output is like Uriah Hall is just incredibly gun shy. Uh, Uriah Hall is afraid to, to put it out there and to really light somebody up, really put together combinations. And I think he said something like he only threw nine punches in round number two. Um, I don't know the statistic on that. I'd have to pull it up. But I mean, in a way, yes, you're right. I can see what he's saying, yeah. And the fact that Uriah Hall only hit Anderson Silva however time, however he hit him in round number three and, and started the beginning, of, the beginning of the end and then finished him in round four. Yes, I can see what you're saying. Because, I mean, that's the story with how Anderson Silva has been since his loss to uh, – his second loss to Chris Weidman. Um, you could actually argue, I'd say, he he had never been hit as hard as he had been in his first fight against Chris Weidman. For had sure. Been, had been knocked completely unconscious. Because um, I don't think since that first loss to Chris Weidman, he has only won one fight. Yeah. And that, and that was against Derek Brunson. Um, and then he also won against Nick Diaz, but it doesn't count. It was actually, yeah, it was an overturn to a draw. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't count. Yeah. Um, doesn't doesn't. It's technically one of the, another one of those things that's just off the books. Yeah. Uh, um. So yeah. So. So I can see what Dana White's saying, but, and I will also say, I can see what he's saying about Uriah Hall. I don't think Uriah right. Hall is going to be making a run at the title anytime soon. Um. But anything's possible, dude. But anything's possible. Like I said, he is on a three-fight win streak now. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like a lot of people – I hate saying this because it sounds like I'm being a douchebag. Um, but a lot of people are saying, you know, having Anderson Silva on your resume as a victory is like great. It's awesome. It's amazing. But I have to say that – having this version of Anderson Silva on your resume is, is not nearly as impressive. Exactly. But at the same time, I think it's a very prestigious honor to be known as Anderson Anderson Silva's last opponent in the UFC. For sure. For sure. That, in of, that accolade in and of itself, regardless of how good Silva was at the time, that's something that he'll have with him forever. For 100%. Um, and I was actually going to show this on, um, camera. I was going to try and download it. Um, but I took a picture because I mean, Uriah Hall was very, very emotional. You know, he, it's very almost like work. he, it's almost like he didn't want to be the guy that finished yeah. Anderson Silva. It, it's just like when Shawn Michaels had to be the guy to put him out, to put out <laughs> to the Rick, Rick, Rick Flair. Yeah. So, yeah. So that is, um. That is the photo that I took of Uriah Hall hugging Anderson Silva. As you can say, as you can Beautiful. see, I put it's a big moment um, 
for both men. Um, and, and it really was. It really was. Um, I mean, it was huge. It's a huge moment. Anderson Silva's last fight in the octagon. I mean, that just makes a lot of people emotional. Like Rashad Evans. It made me for sure. Yeah. I mean, Rashad Evans, who was doing the post show, was really emotional about it. I mean, he too said that he cried. Um, I mean, that's just rough because it's like, it, we're really seeing. It's sad because I heard, I heard somebody say it's the end of the Anderson Silva era. But I think what makes it even sadder than that is the Anderson Silva era ended seven years ago. Really? Yeah. Um, seven or eight years ago. And now it's like, it's like now we're finally putting the horse out to, out to pasture. You know what I mean? We're yeah. Really, we're finally putting the, giving up on it. We're finally putting the dog down. Yeah. Um, and it sucks to have to put it that way and to to phrase it like that. But that's really what it feels like because Anderson Silva, the legend that he is, definitely future Hall of Famer, is, is definitely going to go down in history as one of the greatest fighters of all time, hands down. But there's always going to be that period of time after that grace period where – all people are going to be able to think about is, yeah, but I mean, Michael Bisping beat Anderson Silva, Dean Cormier beat Anderson Silva, um, Adesanya beat Anderson Silva, and it's like, Weidman. Weidman beat Anderson Silva, and it's like, okay, all those guys are good, yeah, so it's like, okay, what's the big deal? But then you get around to guys like Uriah Hall beat Anderson Silva. And again, not discrediting Uriah Hall as a great fighter. He is a great fighter. He, he's beating the legs of Gegar Mousasi. Guys like that, you know, he's a great fighter, undoubtedly. But Uriah Hall, I feel like, has his own trappings that keeps him at that number 10 spot that he's at right now. For like, sure. And, and why he's been there for so long. And it, it kind of makes you sit and wonder, like, oh, Anderson Silva is – he's not the Anderson Silva anymore. You know, it's just – He hasn't been – it's just like, uh, you know, it's it's the end of two eras. It's the it's like, cause cause like I said, the Anderson Silva era ended a long time ago, and now it's like, finally it, he's he's putting it up. It's like when it's like when BJ Penn didn't retire for when he he didn't retire, you know, or Chuck mm-hmm. Liddell, you know, it's yeah. it's it's actually kind of if you think about it, there's actually a really sad long history of fighters fighting way past their prime. For way, sure. way past the time it should have stopped fighting. Um, and but but with a fight like this, I mean, Anderson Silva wasn't even a ranked opponent for the number ten year at Hall. That was more of just a necessity. We necessity. gotta get somebody. Yeah, like Anderson Silva is having his last fight. Let's let it be against the guy. Let's advertise it as this is the last fight for Anderson Silva. This is the guy. We'll put him against Uriah Hall. It actually, in many ways, it kind of reminds me of. Uh, his fight with Israel Adesanya because that was brought up a lot. That was brought up a lot uh, in interviews and promotions uh, because um, a lot of people were saying stuff like, okay, well, Israel Adesanya just danced with him for three rounds, but Uriah Hall's like, well, I finished him. You know? Mm-hmm. And Jerry um, Cannonier's like, I really finished him. Yeah. 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 Um, and Jared Cannonier, of course, being number three right now in the rankings. Exactly. Um, and so, so I guess what, what am I trying to say? I guess what I'm trying to say is that in many ways, it felt like the Adesanya fight was the real last fight. Like it should have For been sure. the retirement fight. And I think the UFC brass kind of felt that felt, way. Yeah. And so they wanted, in, in a weird way, they wanted to try and recreate that. Yeah. And they did the best they could. They did the best they could. Um, and you and you really feel the emotions. And I gotta tell you, man, it, it is just rough back to back watching two great fighters yeah. retire week after week. And we were talking about this too. You had you had Cejudo retire this year. You had Daniel Cormier retire this year. You had B retire this year. You had Anderson Silver retire this year. Possibly Cruz. Possibly Cruz too, right? even though he shouldn't have not come back at all. Exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's 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 tough. 
it's been a tough year. Um, but I think that's all I have to say about Uriah Hall versus Anderson Silva. I mean, I definitely think this is going to do more for Uriah Hall than it's going to hurt him. Um, I could definitely see him getting another fight after this. I mean, this has got to be a major confidence booster because regardless of all the negative stuff I just said about Anderson Silva and where his career has been in the last few years, um, Uriah Hall always looked up and respected him and all that stuff, just like everybody else. I love and respect Anderson Silva too. But this has got to be a major confidence booster, and this is probably going to help Uriah Hall hopefully take that next leg up on whatever opponent he gets next. So, for sure, fingers crossed. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. It was a good night. I enjoyed yeah. all the fights. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be it for me. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if you have anything. Yeah. yeah. Sadness. Um. So yeah. Darkness imprisoning all our things anyways like comment and subscribe if you like the video if you like to see more of us go check out our channel use, use the bell icon if you want to get notifications whatever you want just do you and for always have a good day